Hey everybody, how's it going? Corey here from ThemeCo with a quick video discussing some of the Flexbox features in our new row element. So one thing that I think is important to understand before we get started is that with Flexbox in general, you really get out of it what you put into it. And in the context of our builder that comes in the form of the overall layout and structure of your row, in addition to the content that you're placing inside your columns. So depending on either one or both of those factors, some of these controls, namely the horizontal and vertical alignment, they might not appear to be doing anything, but it could really just boil down to how you have one of those aspects set up. So I just want you to keep that in mind as you're working on your own designs in the future. With that being said, let me just kind of run you through what I'm doing here so that we can see these controls in action. The first thing I'm doing with the layout is I'm employing this auto responsive column technique. I'm not using fixed percentage values that are spanning or adding up to 100%. This is allowing me to have some extra space here in my row, which is necessary for this horizontal distribution to be able to work. In addition to that, I've also given each of my columns a visual style here. So we've got a white background, a little bit of a shadow, and as I run through these vertical alignment controls, you'll be able to see how that works based on that style. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's just jump right in here. For the horizontal alignment control, like I mentioned earlier, it's important that your row has some extra space here for you to actually be able to distribute your columns across that space. If I wasn't using this value and was instead using three equal percentage values, like you do with our preset here, You'll notice that if I adjust anything within here, there doesn't appear to be any visual difference in my overall layout. And again, that's because they're all adding up to 100%, including the gaps. There's nowhere for them to move. However, if I jump back up here and place my custom value back in, and then I go to center, you'll now see that all of my columns have moved to the center of our row. In addition to that, I could also move it to the end. And then Flexbox also has a lot of really cool spacing features, such as space between, which will align your columns so that there's always equal space in between each column. Space around has an equal amount of space here as there would be to the outside here. And then space evenly is sort of the way you would probably expect space around to work, but that came later in the spec and it's something that I use more often than space around just to get things evenly distributed. Now, as for our vertical alignment, you'll notice that by default, we have everything set to stretch. And this is basically what's giving us these equal height columns, even though the content of this last column here is much larger than these columns. You'll notice too that this stretching effect only takes place on one line at a time. So even though I've got six columns in this row, this second line here, the height of it is only determined by the content in that particular line. So if I jump back over here to my align vertical control and I try start instead, you'll now see that we no longer have these equal height columns. Instead, the columns are aligning towards the top of their row like you might normally expect them to with a traditional web layout. However, we can also do some really cool stuff such as vertically center, or we can place our content towards the end of that line. Now, baseline is more of a feature that you would use for text-based elements. I'm actually using the baseline alignment for this icon in my headline here to line it up with this first line of the headline. I'm gonna set this back to stretch, and we're just gonna run through a couple more features that we have down here in our layout options row. The first one is reverse, which all this basically does is it will visually mirror the layout of your row horizontally. Now, the source order of your content is still the same, and I actually cover this in another video of how to get some cool alternating layouts on desktop, but to still have the same pattern on mobile, such as text first and then image. There's a great video on that if you wanna see that in more detail, but just keep that in mind with reverse. All it's doing is mirroring the horizontal view of your row, but the source order is still the same. And finally, we have this grow checkbox. And what grow will effectively do is have your columns expand if there's any available space for them to fill. So since I've defined this sort of minimum width, even though it's not exactly a width, this is going to flex basis. 
with my custom value here, I've got this extra space in between each column that they could grow into if I needed them to. So I can check this box. And now I've got three equal columns that are filling all available space. So there you have it. That's really just a quick overview of some of these basic alignment and layout features of Flexbox. The biggest thing that I want you to walk away from this video with is the idea that if some of these features don't appear to be working, keep in mind that again, what you put into your row is really gonna determine what you get out of it.